we had some guy from St. Louis and some DC guys about to ride with us against the GDs. But let me tell you, I was crazy. It was this guy from Memphis. He wasn't a GD now. He was cool with the shot caller for the GDs. So he had told a guy one day in his unit, yeah, man, I heard gangster told on Birdman on some homies. Sides, y'all know what I'm talking about. So the guy from Atlanta went and told my homeboy Tick from the eight ward, my homeboy Tick from the eight ward had just come from Beaumont, bloody Beaumont. We all go to the wreck, y'all. Louisiana car, we go out there. Posted up, we got our plexiglass and all that on us. So I see two GDs, Spanish dude behind them. Two, D, two GDs, Spanish dude behind them. Two GDs, Spanish dude, they, they, you know, they spread it out. So I'm wondering like, what are these Latinos, what they got, why they in our business, why they with behind these GDs, right? So we all here, like I said, some St. Louis guys came out to ride with us. DC guys out, ride with us. We out here. Now what we waiting on is, this is how I go in the pen, y'all. The dude from Atlanta who told my homeboy Tick what the dude from Memphis said, he had to come out to the yard and he had to sit in the dude's face in front of all of us that yeah, you did say that gangster told on Birdman for some homicides. And had the guy come out to the wreck yard and said, yeah, you did say that, it was gonna go up. It had to go down, y'all. So listen, we wait, we out on the yard. Everybody, we just we posted up. Ain't nobody doing no talking. It's just a standoff right now, right? So the move, they call the move. So the hot and, and uh, Jack, that was his name, was Jack, Jack Frost. Jack Frost, brown skin, light skin. He light, light skin. Like I said, he wasn't no GD. He was just from Memphis, but he was cool with the head shot caller for the GD car. They take out running, go over there by the dome. So the dude from Atlanta come peep his head out the door, but he don't want, he don't want to come out. Cause he know he come out, it's gonna be a wall, or he gonna have to go to wall with the dude because the dude told it to him. So the dude gonna have to defend that, right? Now, we waiting, we waiting. So he sent word outside through his celly to tell my homeboy, man, I don't want to get in that, man. I don't want to sit up. But you said this. You said that man said this, so we gotta straighten this. He don't want to come out. So we waiting, we waiting, wait. Dude don't come out. So the GD, the GD dude say, look, man. Let's just leave this alone, man. Oh, boy, don't want to come out and stand on what he said that my man said, but let's leave that alone. But let me holler at you. So we talk, we walk, we talking. So uh, as we talking, right, I asked him, I said, hey, man. I said, why are these Latino dudes all in our business? What they got to do with this? He said, oh, man, that's the Latin Kings. He said, they our cousins. They back us. We know we, we allies with them right now. We, we ride together. So I'm like, oh, okay. So they got the Latin King rocking with them. I ain't know nothing about what's all this stuff. I ain't, I thought the Latin King be over here, GD, but they'll get together in certain joints. So they had formed up. Cause we had a, I ain't we had a nice click out there. We was ready to rock, roll, y'all. Was that at the FCI or the pen? The pen. So you go to Allenwood Pen. I mean, there's been some trouble. There's been some serious shit that happens there. I had Jimmy Mack on. He did some violent shit in the gym over there. But, you know, a lot of people are like, damn, man, I wish I went to Allenwood instead of Big Sandy. They got weights over there. But there's still a lot of violence there, right? Yeah, it can be <clears throat> golf. Uh, the yard is basically, it, it's half the size of a regular USB. It's only one side. And then they have the yard. So it, it's still, things happen. But it's, it's usually, it's not really with the politics. It's just with the... Uh, a lot of the new guys, they come in, they just don't know how to conduct themselves. They're just really green to the system. And who do you end up running with when you get there? Uh, I was running with the Kings. Let me ask you this. You know, you talked a little bit about the New York, Chicago factions. I mean, you know, usually, man, when, you, when you're in a prison, there's Latin Kings. Them dudes are always sticking together. They go hard for each other. You know, it's like a respect thing comes to shot callers or you know well a cop or whatever when they say something has to be done a certain way it's, it's just it is what it is you know you, you don't call the rules you, you can't you know you, you just fall in suit and eventually you end up going to the smooth program right yeah yeah and earlier you talked about fight or flight i mean those are the two natural instincts right but as a latin king you're not allowed to take flight you have to handle that business right absolutely absolutely that's all you have to do is fight. That, that's all you can do. 
you know, uh, uh, like you mentioned, I believe, like earlier on, uh, someone had to check in because he didn't, you know, he ran from a situation that, you know, he should have. You know, you have to be there. You know, you, everybody is it's like a link. So everybody is supporting everybody, even if they don't get along with, with, with or agree with any of the issues, that, whatever. But when it comes to, to that type of situation, everybody's linked up together in the car and everybody's going hard. You know, it's over stance, drugs, it's uh, disrespect. If you Sometimes it's something simple, which is somebody just, like you said before, just not wiping down that microwave. You know, it was the hottest place during the summer that I've ever been in, in my entire life. Where you at, Lewisburg? Oh, God, yeah. Those cells are just so hot. I was over in B block, B1 and B3, and I was in B2, and, you know, uh, docket sheets, uh, all the transcripts, you know, everything was just good. So I already had that, um, that label that, you know, I was solid all the way around. So I wasn't, I'm not going to mess that up because basically in, in prison, what a lot of people fail to realize is that that's all you have is your word. You know, your lines and it's really all that you have. Uh, nobody's in there just by themselves. So I had to do it in the yard so that everybody could see it. And uh, I wasn't sure if he was hip to it. He was still a little like sketchy about going outside, but we're in wreck cages and they put about six people in at a time. You know, in different cages. So you can see other cages across and the ones that are next to you lined up together. But you can't really, like, nothing can kick off. The only thing they can kick off is what happens in that cage. So I go in there, and I, I go to wreck first. So they ask me to cuff up. I go in, I cuff up. And uh, Sully, he goes, and then he cuffs up. CEOs come out, they bring us, and we walk down the back of uh, D block and walk down those back steps to go to the wreck yard, or to the wreck cages. Uh, the cage next to us was, you know, some other, some other brothers on that side. They already had the knife out there. They brought it out there. So I, they put us both in the cage. There were already two guys in there inside the cage. And then I, I go in and then I go in first and then he goes in. And what's crazy is that people don't realize that the way that they have these cages set up is that initially one person in there is still cuffed up. You know, so I go in, I get my cuffs off, and then I let him get his cuffs off. You know, it just, I'm, I'm not going to like do it, doing that dirty. So, um, it just, just happened fast. He was trying to do pull ups off the side. He had his little towel, he had it wrapped up inside the grate, inside the cage. He was trying to do pull ups. And, uh, one of the other brothers, like, look, uh, I don't know why you're working out. You know what time it is, right? And he gets and he gets down and he's like and his eyes just got big, you know. And that's where I just I I had to just you know I had to put that work in right then and there. And uh, I, I guess the fear in his eyes kind of it, it, it saddens you a little bit, you know. Just it's a different look that someone gives you when they have this feeling like this is it. It's not like the the feeling that everything's gonna be okay. It's not the type of feeling. It it's the type it's the type of look that says I'm never gonna see my family. 